Hey, everybody. Welcome to Improv FAQ at Length. This is a series of longer conversations about improv topics that have lots of questions surrounding them. I'm James Quesada. I'm Bob Wick. And we're joined by a uh, special guest, Rachel Rosenthal. Yay! Hey, Rachel. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Calm down, everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, we really need to put an echo effect. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> so, uh, Rachel, thanks for joining us for a conversation. The topic of the conversation is going to start with um, organic play, organic improv, um, and also about uh, freeform improv, which is a form that you uh, are familiar with with a uh, – a troop called Big Bang. Um, orig- that that troop is uh, out of based out of Boston, right? Uh, we sort of call ourselves just like United States oh, okay. in general because it started in Boston, but uh, it's really more of a touring company, and everyone oh. lives in different places. Okay, so yeah, um, groovy. Well, I, I can't I can't wait to talk about that and um, uh, that 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 troop that form specifically, and then also the general idea of organic play and organic uh, styles uh, in improv. Um, so we, and, and uh, you're now in New York, you're originally from Boston, and we met in New York uh, at the People's Improv Theater, um, and you are a teacher, and uh, you play with the team North Coast, which is a hip-hop uh, opera improvised show, and <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah. Yeah, you do. You do. You're, you're such a great performer, and um, what I've mostly seen you do is North Coast uh, and the hip hop and musical styles. Um, mm-hmm. So that's all the more reason that I'm, I'm curious to just um, talk more in depth about uh, the style that I don't get to see you play uh, as often. Which I really appreciate because most people only want to talk to me about North Coast because <laughs> there's not a lot of hip hop improv out there. So everyone's always asking me about North Coast, but I'm thrilled uh i love north coast but i'm thrilled to talk about uh something else you know yeah cool well, i'm glad yeah, yeah. so <laughs> let's let's start with uh big bang what, what's the what's the story behind that troop when it started and how yeah. you developed so uh, big bang used to be it basically developed out of improv boston so uh Improv Boston is an incredible theater uh, in Cambridge, not in Boston, uh, in Cambridge, in uh, in Mass that I performed at for about nine years. And um, Will Loera uh, was the artistic director, and he really brought. Uh, he came from Chicago to Boston and um, was the artistic director of Improv Boston when I was there. And he kind of created this style of like what we now call Boston freeform uh, that was sort of like based in a couple different things from Chicago and in Boston and stuff like that. Uh, and initially what it started as was the improv Boston main stage. So we had like a main stage cast that performed twice every weekend. And I was on that cast and will directed it. Um, and it, was so fun and we did this freeform style uh directed by will and then we did a lot of festivals and got uh, quite like a good reputation on the road um but as the like artistic management and stuff changed at improv boston um we could no longer really tour as the improv boston main stage because we it, it kind of became its own thing gotcha. uh and so will establish big bang uh and now we i mean i i think it was established in like 2007 or 8 is my guess um and so and i that's how long i've been on the team uh, since the beginning and now we're kind of all over the country so will lives in sarasota florida uh, as of now, and uh, I'm in New York. Some of our members are in Chicago, LA, Boston, um, and we mainly do touring gigs, so like festivals, uh, international festivals, and stuff like that. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, because I, I I'm familiar with Improv Boston by reputation, and I um, is there is there like an alternate kind of name for the free form, which would be all form? Am I am I making that up? <laughs> So <laughs> all form is something that came after my time okay, at IB. Okay, okay. So I don't know if I can like fully speak to it, but I think that all form was something created by another artistic director that was like inspired by the free form that we did with Will and then kind of a little twist. I, 
I, I, I don't, I, I don't think I can really speak to exactly what all form is, but yeah. okay. seems similar. I was, um, I, I was purely curious, mo- mostly because I, um, probably a couple of years ago was perusing the Improv Boston, um, website and it might've actually been because, uh, coming to New York, I was looking for like regional opportunities to maybe do some, uh, festivals or take shows on the road. Yeah. And, um, I just remember reading a, a, up on, um, the, uh, show program and seeing that word uh, a lot. So I was just curious. Um, yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, but tell, tell me about the free form that Big Bang does. Like, uh, how, 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 what, what is it? How would you describe it? Like, what, what is your um, description of show look like when you do go on the road? So it's one of my absolute favorite styles of improv to perform by far. Um, I think that it exists in many, like, iter- like some people might call it organic. Some people might call it something else. Um, but the way that we sort of describe it when we're teaching is it's free. I think a lot of times people think that free form is just like a montage, uh, but it's not, it, it's kind of like a method of deconstruction where like any scene on stage can be deconstructed into a million different other ideas or scenes or moments and then followed. So it's really like a follow the funny type form um, where you are creating the form as you go. And so every show doesn't only have unique scenes, but kind of has a unique form as well. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. It's so fun. I love. Um, so B- Bob and I uh, are on a, are on a team with uh, another friend of ours, uh, Gary, and the team's called Javelin. I thought you were going to forget Gary's name for like <laughs> uh, a second. Some dude that we know. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I got tripped up on how to say it. Like whose name is Gary? Um, a friend of ours, <laughs> and his name is Gary. Uh, <laughs> but our friend Gary and the two of us are, are a trio, and um, uh, we try to make a rule for ourselves when we play of like uh the first the first part of the show is anything but a scene and then we don't use sweep edits for the rest of the show um Mm -hmm. those that's really what defines our form um as a challenge to do uh other stuff um and we try to play around with like transformative edits and like surrealism and non-scenic things is is that in line with the kind of stuff that happens with big bang yeah um it's so funny yeah, well, there's no sweep edits. And in fact, like I did improv as a child. And so I like grew up doing like short form improv. And then when I went to Bo- uh, I'm actually from around New York area, but I moved to Boston after college. And when I went to Boston um, and started doing improv there, I sort of learned long form like as as I went like on the spot. <laughs> uh, and so and because I was working with Will, I didn't even, um, I didn't even know what a sweep edit was. And I like moved to New York at 31 after doing improv for many, many years. And I was like, why are people just like running across the stage? (laughs) And like, it just felt so, um, I know it felt so hacky to me, which is ridiculous now because obviously I, I understand the sweep edit, but like, we only did what made like, yeah, I guess like some people call them pivots. Some people call them transitional edits. Like, like they're always like in the moment there's, um, and, and one of the things I love about big bang is because we really see all of those moments as part of the show. Uh, and so sometimes when you do like a, um, a sweep edit, it's almost like you're like, Okay, pause the improv for a second. We're gonna sweep across the stage. Pretend we didn't do that. That's like yeah. a, a <laughs> right, you know, right. you didn't see that. And now we're resetting. And now the scene is back on. Um, and <laughs> like it's almost like uh, showing the puppet strings or whatever. Yes. Where yeah. we more are like every single moment, including the transitions, are part of the show and are interesting and. Um, we ha- like when we teach the form, uh, which will primarily teaches the form, but a bunch of us do when we do festivals and stuff. Uh, it's really teaching like all of the different kinds of transitions you can do, um, which are based on like what you're inspired by in the scene. So like if someone just like said something funny, like you might do like some kind of verbal edit, but if someone like, uh, like a steel physically- line type edit or yeah, yeah, yeah okay, exactly. Yeah. You could do something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
or uh, yeah, like a, a good example that we use <laughs> is like uh, my friend um, Paul Dome. He's been in the cast forever as well. He uh, was in a show. I, I don't think I was in this show, but uh, someone on stage was like um, doing a scene that was pretty like real. And, and someone was like, I, you know, about a breakup. And someone said, I really, I miss her smell. And then Paul edited with uh, a character named Mr. Smell. <laughs> and I feel like that's a good example of like, who knows? Yeah. Who knows yeah. what's going to happen, right? Where it's like, I missed her smell turned into I'm Mr. Smell, uh, yeah. the superhero. Um, but you could also be inspired by something else. It could be physical. It could be it could be kind of anything at all. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I mean, it's uh, it's so interesting to me that you didn't learn with sweep edits. It just seems like to <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, that's. I, 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 that's like the thing you learn right after zip zap zop. You know? I, <laughs> like, I so really cool. have, I've learned, I've, I've noticed, I have a very untra like not traditional like path in improv and improv is like my full time career, but I didn't like, I don't have that same, like we took a one oh one and we all like learned it together. Like I don't have that because I learned improv as a kid. And then I kind of just like, kept going and then i don't know it's it is interesting that i never learned sweet edits. the thing that really threw me was that like i was uh, a team from Bo uh from new york who i was i was friends with these guys they used to live in boston they moved to new york they got on a team at ucb and then they came back to boston to do a show and not and it was a three-person show it was great it was very funny but all of their edits were like um i know that we're on a podcast right now so yeah. this is like very <laughs> visual but it was like pointing you know it was like pointing like i need you in the scene oh, the like, directing yeah yeah oh, directing or like yeah. using your hand to be like get off get off get off i'm coming on and i was like yeah. what the fuck <laughs> is happening yeah. It, it felt, uh, yeah. And the thing is, it was a great show. Like the scenes were great, but it felt right. so lazy as a whole. I was like, can't you do that more graciously? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Anyway. <laughs> uh, think of a strong initiation, buddy. Let's just let's try that. You know. <laughs> but it was like, and they were great improvisers, but it just made me realize, yeah. oh, I I like I I came at this backwards. Like most yeah. people Good. learn that first. Exactly. Uh, well, it sounds like it's been an advantage, like no one ever drilled like these are the rules. This is how you this is how you play, kid. Uh, so you, no. you like you don't have that th those those voices you know of past instructors in your head telling you yeah. telling you your checklist that you have to hit when you're doing a scene. Which that's yeah, that's I, awesome. Yeah, and I think like what I what actually happened was so like I did a lot of improv, and then when I moved to New York, I'd already been doing improv for like you know many many years. I never like to say exactly how long because some people don't know will know that I'm older than I look. Um, but like moved to New York and then I took classes in New York and I'm glad that I did, but like I took UCB classes and it was interesting to like put a name to things where I'm like, oh, I do that, but I didn't know I, that was called this or whatever, you know, like yeah. I remember the word mono scene sounded so silly to me. Like I was like <laughs> mono scene, but I'm like, yeah, I've done that. Like the one long one. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah that was funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah Cause I, like I go, go ahead. Uh, uh, so I think in my mind, because exactly what you said, Rachel, where you're like, okay, so you have these uh, sweep edits are kind of like gesturing edits mm. um, that tend to be, you know, they're, they're, they're blunt instruments of um, moving from scene to scene or, or having whatever it is that you're wanting to have happen, uh, you know, to execute that. But you would think that, like, the progression of going to something like freeform or uh, organic transformative edits would be like, I wonder if we could skip that step. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, do, it does seem like... Um, it's interesting to come at it backwards. And then yeah, do you have to like yeah. curb your impulses a lot when you play in like montages that are bread and butter, like tag and sweep? Uh, yes. I feel like I used to now I'm used to it, but like, like, cause I've been in New York for almost 10 years, but 
I would be like, yeah, I would just be initiating a new scene with like now what someone would maybe call like a focus edit um, or something like that, right? Where I'm just like strongly entering the stage and initiating something. And people would think I was doing a walk on and I'm like, oh, okay, well now it's a walk on. I don't know. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I would, if I felt like I actually had to almost like give up uh at first like playing what i was you don't have to crawl on the floor this is a podcast my husband's <laughs> Sam? crawling on the floor Sam's crawling on the floor it's oh, so nice <laughs> he doesn't hey, want to be on screen um but like uh <laughs> but um yeah i almost kind of felt in the beginning like i was like it actually was i i felt very hindered like i was like maybe i don't no one does the same kind of improv i do like what what don't you know so when I first moved to New York, I played with people from Boston that I had played with previously. Um, oh my God, that is yeah. that is so similar to my feeling coming mm -hmm. in because I'm like trying to adjust and everything, and and I really love the people I'm playing with, but like, um, you know, it's just acclimating to a, a different playing style and different norms. Um, yeah. In in troop chemistry, and uh, yeah, of course, like I find myself uh, putting together a team of people from Michigan or uh, Detroit transplants and um, finding opportunities to play with them in what's generally like looser. Um, it's not as uh, organic in the way that you're talking about with um, free form, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's more, yeah. I, I feel more licensed to kill in um, playing with people that I, you know, am used to playing with in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think like my biggest pet peeve when, like if I'm coaching a team, I'm, I'm like, okay, let's get rid of these transitions. Like, cause it, like if there's a group scene and someone wants to edit it, they come out and they take their two hands and they're like, eh, get off, get off. Yeah, yeah. That's how they like, <laughs> and I'm shoo, like, shoo. the face, seems, like we're done here. <laughs> yeah. This seems so like, and I know it's, that's just the method that they know how to, that will right. communicate, you know, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm like, to me, it seems like, so like, you're done. It's my turn. <laughs> yeah. Punishment. Uh, and, and so whenever I would be coaching a team and they would do that, I'd be like, let's get rid of these strings that I'm seeing. And like, let's just like, how could you do this in a way? How could you initiate the next scene in a way that makes it clear to the people on stage hey, you should leave now. And another thing that I feel like uh, we do a lot of in Big Bang uh, that I just remember from rehearsals with Will many, many, many years ago is like when we were, if like, for example, in that example, if I was in a group scene and someone came out to initiate something fresh, everyone in the group, instead of just being like, oh, my scene's over, cool, and dropping to neutral and walking off stage, we would usually walk off stage in character, in character, or like continuing oh, like what that. we were doing silently. So it felt more like a slow fade versus like a hard cut. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, like a true like, transition. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, like you said, like a fading, like in music, like when you when you fade yeah. into the next cross song. Fade, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cross yeah, fade. Yeah, cross fade. And I just feel like it, it looks like so, especially for people watching improv, where they're like, "How do they do that?" Like, I think right. that really. Versus when they see the strings, when they see someone pointing and directing and yeah. controlling the edits, the, the audience is a little less mystified because they see it happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's more, um, there's a mystique of, about the seamlessness of organic and freeform. Yeah. Um, what's, what is the learning curve like for people that you've either coached or for yourself and, you know, when... I don't know how often you, you change your ad members to Big Bang, but like what what is the learning curve like to uh, people who are getting used to playing that way? Yeah, God, I think for um, anyone who's already like a skilled improviser probably can get it pretty quickly. I feel like um, I I don't know how you feel about this, but you know, when you're teaching in like a smaller market where people don't get to see a lot of different styles of improv, yeah. I think sometimes it's hard to like get people to visualize something if they've never seen it before or to feel something. And like when I'm teaching level one, you know, I'll, I'll say like, it's really hard to learn music if you've never heard a song. Yeah, I sort of feel that way sometimes about certain styles of improv where I'm like, 
if they could just see one set and I think it'll click a little bit better, uh, so they understand, but, uh, anyway, so that's not really an answer to your question. Um, I think it depends <laughs> on how quickly people get it. I think people can get it, especially if they have experience being improvisers. I don't think yeah. it's that hard. Um, well, I think like, yeah. When you're working yeah. with anybody new, is there any exercises or anything other than just putting out moments and making them replay? Cause that's usually what I do. Like, let, let, I think you've mentioned it before, like, okay, no, uh, good, good initiation. Let, let's go back and try to try to soften this orchestra orchestrating you're doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sometimes it's like, um, there are exercises, but I think really it's just teaching the transitions because okay. then you can start to teach people to look for them. So, it's kind of like, uh, okay, do, do a scene and then people laugh and I'm like, cool. What, what did we laugh at? What was funny? And someone was like, oh, well, the way he said, Mr. Smell, that was funny, you know, or what, or, you know, or the way yeah. she was gesturing with her hand was interesting. And I'm like, great, let's pivot on that. Let's use that hand gesture and let's just start a new scene with that. And then we'll just do that. Okay, cool. We're doing all physical transitions until people kind of get that in their bones. And then it's like, cool, let's go back to scenes again. <clears throat> what did you find funny in this scene? Um, and so that's one way to just at least start um, deconstruct deconstructing scenes in a way where you can find what's funny um, physically, what's funny verbally, just sounds. Um, I think like really one thing that Freeform does is it, there's not a lot of two people talking head scenes. It you got to use the whole space because the more space you activate, the easier it is to like remember what was happening when and when to bring something back. Yeah. Um, so it's full. I mean, like with Big Bang now, like we always go into the audience, we climb over chairs, like we do all that. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> picking people up and like, there's a lot of trust. A lot yeah, of trust. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I, I also I like the idea of or I like I like associating the edits with the idea of deconstruction because it makes it more purposeful and and less like random or sporadic. Although, you know, so I, I guess, again, keep keep um, what I'm curious about in the learning curve is mm -hmm. how do you manage some of that chaos if people are kind of jumping on these moments um because i i have played with a, a troupe um called presto changeo it's a long-standing troupe of mine um and the, the thing that we started with was like let's follow every impulse let things turn on a dime um and 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 we played around with at a certain point transformative edits but initially it was just like be impulsive period and just we'll just see what happens and the first two or three shows of ours were a hot mess <laughs> and we were all we were all like we were all i was i was a new ish improviser like four or five years in maybe uh but but everyone else you know it was, it was like 10 years of improvising maybe on average and it was like um so so it wasn't necessarily that we were still finding our footing uh it's just when we gave ourselves the challenge of following every impulse we had to kind of um we had to have have some rough patches and collisions and um like mm -hmm. what the fuck is going on uh shows to <laughs> to like get past it so i'm just wondering like like how do you help people that are in that experiencing that if you're coaching a team that can't quite make sense of uh the organic yeah so i think it's a combination of following the impulses but restraint is still really interesting as well mm -hmm. and figuring out like it's not just about the funny thing. It's how the funny thing is revealed and the timing of the funny thing. Right. So it's like all of, there's so many different things that can be manipulated. It's the, the funny thing, the re this is like a workshop I was teaching last year where it's like, there's the funny thing. There's the reaction to the funny thing. And then there's the timing of the funny thing. Like all of the, oh, it's yeah. not just the game or whatever. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, there's so many pieces of it. Um, if we're only like, this is funny, this is funny, this is funny, we're missing all the in-between stuff, right? Uh, so I think like the mechanics of it, um, you know, you can break it down to like looking for verbal cues, 
physical cues or like stage cues. Where on the stage are you? Um, and then if you follow, I think like, yeah, it could be a clusterfuck of if you just like follow every impulse, every impulse. But I, I think like what we often on Big Bang feel is like not every transition is going to be used in every show. Like you almost create your toolkit for that show. So it's like, oh, we did this like physical transition a bunch of times. Like now the audience knows what that one is. That one will keep coming back. Just like a callback to something verbal, right? Like yeah. that transition will come back a few times. Almost um, like the transition itself becomes a game. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes yeah. part of the show. Like I remember doing a show in Sarasota, Florida, where Will works uh, at the Sarasota Improv Festival. Um, you, I don't know, last year, maybe two years ago. And <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid, but it was just like, there was one scene where someone was like standing straight and two people were like crouched at the bottom. And then someone came out and basically pointed out that like with one person standing straight, straight and two people crouched at the bottom, it looked like a dick and two balls. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's like super highbrow stuff. So stay with no, me. no, oh. play the high intelligence. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, and then it was like any time in a scene, someone was standing in that configuration, we would start, we would switch to like, as you can see here in the chart, you know, like we all physically became whatever the object was. And like that just became a huge part of that specific show. Yeah. Um, but you won't necessarily see that transition or that move in every show. Um, yeah. The main thing is there's no tags or sweeps. It's all eye contact. Oh, and that's the other thing. I think one of the first things I teach for like, if I'm coaching a team is how do you really use eye contact? Cause I think we learn day one in improv, like eye contact's important, but then we just sweep and we point to each other and stuff. So we're actually not using eye contact as much as we can. So I'll literally just be like, okay, if these two people are in a scene and I walk on and I look at them as I'm entering, um, it's probably a walk on. Right. But if I make zero <laughs> like contact yeah. with them and I look straight downstage and I start something that feels very unrelated, guess what? It's probably a focus edit or some sort of transition into something new. So like yeah. really using the eye contact to like do a lot of the work for you. Yeah. And one of the things I really like about this playing style is, um, it, it makes you pay attention more to each other's moves and um keeps you on your toes in my experience is like um and you have to make you have to make choices on whether you're going to treat it as uh, a walk on you because you, there's still these like split moments right where you're like oh fuck i don't know exactly what this is um uh <laughs> and you either have to respond to it or you have to peel out and just be like all right it's something else taking over and you kind of have to, <laughs> to to like embrace the fact that like the intention, the way you respond to it might not match the intention of what's happening, but there's possibility in that too, right? Is like right or yeah, right or I wrong, think. something great can happen out of the way you react. Oh my God. I, I'm like trying to, yeah, I think like, but that's the beauty of yeah. it because those mistakes are just such a fun part of it. I'm trying yeah. to think of this specific moment in a show that I, of course it's going to be impossible to explain, but yeah, it was just like a physical gag someone was doing. I tried to do it. I messed it up. It turned into a whole other, I don't know. I just yeah. think that's like such a beautiful part of it. Um, well, I would, I'd have to guess like just as a performance, you, you mentioned you guys do a lot of festivals uh, as someone who's been an audience member, like watching, you know, I love watching improv, but you see, oh, you start to see the pattern of, Oh, this group, you did something different, but they also did the sweep edit. Oh, this one's doing a sweep edit. So when you get to the third or fourth group, you, you kind of like, I, I know they're doing something different, but also there's a lot of the same. So having someone discover their edits in real time, that mm -hmm. that itself adds another layer to to, to the performance. And that's got to be mm -hmm. just just awesome as an audience member. Like, oh, something something unique, something different, something yeah. cool, you know? Yeah. I hope so. I think so. I mean, I know like I feel like I love performing it. Like it's just so rewarding. Um, be, and, and, and I think in Boston, I maybe took it for granted cause it was just like what I did, you know? Yeah. 
um, we actually had that long form preform show as the like main stage show before there was a Herald program. The Herald program started there in like 2008, maybe. Okay. Um, but like we had been doing this for years and years and years before that. So I once I started seeing the Herald, I was like, what? <laughs> I learned it the other way. Yeah, that's so, I, so, it's so I love that. I love that. <laughs> so, and, and um, you talked about going into the audience and stuff. Um, do you, are, how often are you like breaking the fourth wall or going meta um, and like incorporating the players kind of like um, a- as characters? You know what I mean? Like, is that yeah. something you, you stir away from or incorporate here and there? I don't know about meta too much. Like, I, I don't love meta too much. I guess it could happen, but uh, we break the fourth wall some. Well, no, I, I feel like more what we do is you can almost initiate a game, like a short form kind of game with the audience. It's free form. So it's not long form. It's not short form. It's kind of free, right? Yeah, yeah. So like it, you, for example, uh, there was this show where like, in uh again it was in sarasota i just know it well because it's on tape so i've like seen it uh but like i was on stage and i was like this woman who was like looking for her cats and will was in the audience and he was like conducting the audience to make them make cat sounds and so that became like part of the show was that like the audience was making cat sounds (laughs) so like we do like incorporate them in this way that i think if I didn't know the show, it could sound kind of cheesy, yeah, but like yeah. it, it, it like melds together nicely, you know, or like we almost in the middle of the show, you could even do like a pillars, like a short form game where you're like sitting next to someone in the audience and you're like, Oh yeah, of course. Like I know you, I met you at, and you just like make the audience member fill in the blank, you know, a little yeah, short yeah. form thing in the middle of the show. Like that might happen too. Um, so, so it's not, not, it's not off the table. The show. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, nothing's really off table, but we're never going to stop showing big. All right, that scene was funny. Show <laughs> for that scene. Well, do you ever like just okay. break into like an anecdote or anything? Or like, you know what I mean? Like, like a Ask like Armando a style? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just curious. Uh, 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 rarely is it like first person, but we'll do like character monologues and then okay. we'll make someone okay. sing. Like there's usually underscoring, then that person might sing. Like, okay. I think it's kind of like, Anything can happen, but it's usually in character. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh. So, and, and so, uh, tell me about like this your is feel. Fun. This is fun to talk about. Yeah, I'm glad. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, really quick, it, yeah. is there like a YouTube page or anything? Do you guys have any? Like you said, there's there's some record shows yeah. that you've seen. Uh, yeah, we definitely. I, I would love have... to see some links. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I'll like. I'm like, where? What's our facebook and stuff but well, yeah we yeah do. let us know because uh, we would love to include them in in the description and yeah. um feature them somewhere uh so that people yeah. can check it out because I, I agree it's it's like if you don't if you don't see it it's it's, it's i should i should say if you don't as hear soon the song, as you see it it is yeah. so much easier to then uh conceptualize and um try out as a if you're interested in it um so uh tell me about your feelings on the word organic. Do you, do you, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know what it is, but like, I do think that the word organic improv for some reason has this like, uh, like, you know, some people don't like the word moist. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Something about the word organic improv. It, it's like, ugh, you know, but, um, <laughs> I think it's cause I've seen, seen those shows, you know, where someone's like, <laughs> Ooga booga, ooga booga, ooga booga. (laughs) Eat a burger, eat a burger, right? (laughs) Um, And by the way, side note, my husband's, well, you know, Sam. Sam and I were just watching Stella, you know, the the, like old like show with like Michael Ian Black. Yes, yeah, the three guys, yeah. I was like, this is like if an organic, in a good way, this is like if an organic improv team just like wrote a script because they have moments in it where they do that in, as characters in a, in the show. Um, but anyway, I, I there's nothing wrong with organic improv. I think it's basically the exact same thing. Okay. It's just how it's uh, how it's presented. And I, I, I get nervous that people have that negative feeling about it. And so I'm like, well, I don't want to call it that just in case people already have a predetermined idea of what that 
looks like and they don't like it. But that's just me being a snob. Well, I don't know. I, I think it's uh, it's interesting the way that that uh, associations develop, especially in, you know, an art form where it's it's like and, and especially in an art form that is still building its mainstream um, reputation or, or concept for a lot of uh, people. Uh, yeah, it can be tricky to, to, to associate um, something like organic with whether or not it's going to be your cup of tea. I mean, it's even like sometimes people hear like improv and they're like, ugh, because right, right, they right. like saw a bad improv show, right? Or like, oh, yeah, yeah. Or it's like we as improvisers were like skit, like the word yeah, skit yeah. is beneath us for some reason, but the word scene is great. So I think it's something like that. Yeah. You know? Sometimes I think it's too broad. Like the the word is like, well, what isn't organic? You know what I mean? It's, it, it's, uh, it's unscripted. So like, yeah, it's really, and sometimes, um, I, what I what I think about it specifically as though is is you know well well executed ooga booga eat a burger <laughs> transitions <laughs> well <laughs> executed yeah man well executed well, but but like no, but <laughs> yeah I'm with you I think it like it it, it can be more than that like organic yeah. like yeah. you said organic everything's improvised so like what does organic mean yeah. to me like the like a Harold I'm like. I don't love performing for me personally, the Herald, because it's so formulaic that I feel like I, I miss out on the impulses. To me, it's like yeah. improv is like in the moment, in the impulses, right? But like you can't really do that in a Herald unless you're like really good at it. You can somehow keep that. But it's really like, okay, wait, what was the, what was A1? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do A2, right? Whereas, in, in Big Bang, I could be like, oh, that's funny. I'm going to jump in. And I don't feel the judgment of someone being yeah. like, yo, you're walking on my scene or whatever. It's like, <laughs> every, it's it's just we're building yeah. it together. Yeah. And I like, no, the, I I like think, the word free in there. Uh, me too. Because I, I do think, I think organic has been abused because I've seen so many troops or been a part of troops who, who start off, hey, we're going to be so organic. We're going to do something new. But first we get a get. And then from there, I want three people down, you know, for two minutes. And, and like, it, it like, why are there all these rules to something that's supposed to be to, 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 like free and open and, you know, yeah, just, yeah, it, I, it's, you still have to color in between the lines. And I'm like, no, I just want to, you know, just grab a crayon and go for it, man. <laughs> and like, I had this, um, I had this conversation with Carla Kukowski on her podcast, like, a year or two ago. Um, Is that Improv Yak? Improv Yak. Cool. Yeah. And we basically discover, I kind of discovered about myself that I am really more of a scene work over form kind of person. Like I, I when I'm like, I always thought it was crazy when I'm like coaching a team where they're like, the first thing they think about is what kind of form they want to do where I'm like, well, what kind of improv do you want to do? And then figure out the form that maybe fits that. But I think the reason I'm like that, that I'm like, cause you could have a really, uh, you could have some complicated form and terrible improv scenes, or you could have great improv scenes and no form and it's a montage, but it's really great. So who cares about the, the form? Um, but I think the reason I have that mindset is because of Big Bang, because I really learned long form in this free form way that I, yeah, I, I think I just prioritize the funny moment over the structure itself. Yeah. And it's just, again, the combination of those two words, free and form is like, <laughs> it's, I think it's just more useful than the word uh, organic is because it, it kind of implies that you're supposed to make use of the freedom, right? Is that like freedom is the form. Um, so I've, I've like, I've also had it happen when kind of like Bob was saying where, where it's like, Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to do an anything goes montage. And then, and then we just do sweeps and tags and it's like, yeah, let's, <laughs> let, let's take advantage of the fact that anything goes like if we're going to do that. Yeah. Um, I remember my, my teammate, um, Dave Sawyer uh, telling me that he had he had done a, a workshop. Maybe it was him and Paul teaching in Europe somewhere, and they did a workshop. And then the team did the show, and all of their all of their groups, like one of them edited as like a bird, and then it, 
all of the edits became somehow bird related. And so at the end of the show, you can almost name your form. Like yeah. the form of this yeah. show wasn't free form. It was the bird form or whatever, you know, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. I like it. Uh, so on, on, on the um, substance of the scenes, um, yeah, what do you, are, are you looking for like, like a scene arc what or or like how do you kind of like um what what's what's some of the the, the freedom and opportunities in freeform um for like edit points uh you know if you, if you're making sure that you're still taking care of the scenes um but you have these moments like the um uh Mr. Scent um mm -hmm. where it's like that's not a traditionally that probably wouldn't traditionally be uh, an edit point especially if you're not for like a sweep edit right uh uh, so, so like, do you have any kind of guidelines for like what you're looking for out of the scenes or what you're making sure does or doesn't happen to negatively yeah. affect the scenes? Well, yeah, I think it's so impulse based that you, right. Like I missed her smell. I missed her smell. Maybe that, that was like in a, in a Herald, um, you wouldn't edit there. Cause it's like in the middle of like this emotional moment versus after a big laugh. But in this situation, the big laugh is actually going to come from the transition. Mm. That's where the yeah. laugh's going to come in. Um, but I do think, like you said, if you act on every impulse, you can just have like a clusterfuck show. So I do think that in my mind, like sometimes I am like, um, okay, wait, I gotta let this, like, cause after all, everything could be funny. Like yeah, it yeah, almost yeah, becomes yeah, like, yeah. there's so many moments. Um, another way, like we talk about sometimes is like, uh, you, everything's like a hyperlink and you're like clicking it to lead to the next scene, you know, the next funny yeah. thing. And anything could be a hyperlink. Anything could be a click. Um, and obviously you can't click on everything or you're just going to have a page full of pop-up ads. Um, no, um, <laughs> but like, I just feel like, you know, it, it can be a mess. So you, so you got to regulate those impulses in a, in some way. And I also think that the way that you regulate them um, gives you the style of show because you might have a free form show that has really like grounded emotional scenes, or you might like, it depends who you're playing with and what their style is, I think. So you might have a show that's like really, really, really fast. Um, you might have a show that's a mix of both. So it just kind of depends, you know, so if it is one of those like slower shows, those impulses might be a little bit like more latent or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it depends on the, on the show itself and where you're getting the laughs and, you know. Yeah, and just finding finding your your balance individually and as a team for how how much you're uh, pulling the trigger on those moments. Yeah, and yeah. I'd imagine audience input too, because you know what you think is or how they're reacting. You gotta you gotta mm -hmm. find uh, the balance between that as well. I, I would imagine. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, and oh god, I forgot what I was just gonna say. It'll come back to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so what. My uh, again, coming back to this, the, I, I love that the topic of substance versus form or substance and form. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure we could have a whole nother conversation just on that. But um, I guess obviously it's not inherently better or worse or maybe it is. Who knows? But but uh, the difference between free form or playing with uh, more overt edits, um, it just it, I'm sure it's a matter of, of taste and what you want out of your show and what you're you're <clears throat> trying to play at. But like um what what would you for people who are like interested in exploring after this conversation um this style of play like or wary of it like what would you say you specifically get out of free form that you know you probably aren't going to get from other other forms you know how like like ucb's motto is don't think but they teach the most thinkiest um Form there is right. like it's weird to say don't think but here's the order of scenes and these are the things you can do <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i think this really frees you up into the don't think it's a lot more impulse right and i think that there's such a trust 
in doing this kind of improv because it has to be very judgment free. No scene can be precious because any scene can turn into 10 other scenes. So you can't be like, Hey, I had a really good idea and I was hanging on to it and I was waiting. To it's just like, it's just like everything is part of what we're creating and it has to be let, like you really let go. There's n it's very little brainy stuff. It's much more like impulse going with your gut and just like letting go. And I think that feels really free as an improviser because there's so many people who are just doing the thinky, thinky, thinky improv. And I think that's just like hard. Yeah. yeah. I, and on the, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the trust aspect of it too, because it, 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 it to free you to stop thinking and just uh, act and trust your gut or shoot from the hip, however you want to say it, uh, is what you can get out of it as a player individually. But also I, I imagine it demands um, to support more aggressively too, right? Is that like that no totally. judgment comes from both sides? Yeah. yeah, I think it's way more supportive. And um, I think like I... I don't know when you, when did you get, when did you come to New York? Uh, three years ago. Okay. So uh, when you came, I was just making the transition. I had been teaching at the pit and I quit the pit to teach at Reckless, oh, yeah. um, which sadly is no longer, but Reckless was like the one theater in New York that I felt was doing some similar stuff. Um, like freeform kind of stuff. Okay. Um, they had different names of their forms and stuff, but very similar impulse support over individual style, like forms. And I remember coaching a team more recently where they were like, it was a, most of the people were pit trained, I guess. And like, there was one person that came from reckless and I just felt like he was the most supportive. Like he would jump out and do support moves but some of the other players were a little more precious with their scenes where they felt he was like um, steamrolling or whatever sure, you yeah. want to call it. But I was like, he's adding, he's shining a light on your idea. You can't be so precious with your idea. Yeah. Um, but because it's by committee, it, like, but it, yeah, everyone yeah. has to have the same mindset of like what we're right. creating or like the kind of thing we're creating. Otherwise that kind of disjointed improv is going to happen. Like, I don't know. I, I think part of that too is like when you perform with people that you just like know, like have the same kind of style as you or creatively you gel with versus performing with people that you were placed on a team with by an outside party, such as a house team system. Yeah. It's like different styles. Totally. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, the, the, it, it's uh, demanding to, to stop being so precious, I think is a really um, valuable challenge that every improviser should um, go through some kind of phase of being challenged to uh, let go in that way. Mm -hmm. um, very cool. Yeah. Well, Rachel, thanks so much. Before we let you go, I, I know that you're doing a bunch of stuff on uh, online. You're still teaching virtually. Um, where's the best place for people to find the things you're doing? Or is there anything in particular you'd like to plug? Um, yeah. I mean, my website is the Ray Uh My nickname is Ray Row. Uh, or on Facebook, I'm Ray Rowe Show on Facebook. Um, and then Big Bang, since we've been talking so much about Big Bang, uh, we're Big Bang Improv on Facebook and Twitter, and I think just Facebook and Twitter. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, North Coast is my hip hop improv team. We've been doing live Instagram shows on Saturdays where we freestyle audience suggestions, and we're actually um, kind of oh, mixing cool. it up. We're going to start doing some new shows as well. So TBD on that, but we have been doing eight o'clock on Saturdays yep. on Instagram and that's North coast NYC on all social media. Uh, yes. And, uh, I, I slightly misspoke earlier in describing, uh, North coast cause I, um, think I called it a hip hop opera and, uh, there, there are kind of two versions of it, which is, um, uh, the, the hip hop improvised hip hop show, uh, mm -hmm. is scenes in hip hop. Uh, but then you also have anybody, which is more the hip hop opera of a narrative right. kind of biography, biographical show like Hamilton. So, yes, and, yes. and so you're, that's very cool. So, so you guys are finding ways to adapt, um, 
improvised hip hop online? Yeah, I think like for now we were really just doing the freestyling stuff because um, adding musical elements to Zoom is like yeah. a whole other <laughs> good yeah. Yeah. But been... um, we we're just actually about. I run the classes program for North Coast also, and um, we're just about to start teaching some uh, freestyling and stuff online. Uh, at first we were waiting oh, wow. till the world opened back up, but, uh, seems like that's not happening. So, sure. uh, we're going to be teaching a bunch of like really cool stuff online. So that's exciting. And we're working on, as of this week, we're working on some rehearsals for some shows that we can actually do online together instead of just Instagram, which is just two people at a time. So we'll see what that looks like. And we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll look. I'll look forward to checking it out, and we'll include all the That's, links in the description. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I, 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 two years was it two years ago? I went and visited James, and he's like, "You got to see this." It's the first show he t- like my first New York Aww. show was to see you guys. I, I loved it. I was yeah. so excited. It was actually the two of us and our our friend Gary. Um, the, the yeah. and that trio. Um, Aww, there's his cool. name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, great, Rachel. It it's, was so fun to talk about organic improv with you uh, and free form. And um, thanks for taking the time to chat with us. And I'm glad that you're uh, well, all things considered. And we'll look yeah. out for stuff that you're doing next. Sounds great. Thank you guys so much. This was really fun. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we'll so catch nice you. meeting you. We'll you catch too. you next time on Improv FAQ at length.